Morning, it's uh, Roland from East Marsh Acres and I'm going to take you around today as I can't really call them projects, um, but it's basically maintenance as we uh, move through the summer. And first stop is uh, Trisha is collecting eggs with our chickens. So our 13 chickens are uh, kind of integrated with each um, other. I don't see Albs anywhere. He was just right behind me. Oh. So how many were in there? There's one underneath the, uh, the whatchamacallit, yep. So they've been doing interesting things lately. Um, the egg laying is, uh, has, has gone up. Um, we're pretty sure based on the fact that there are some tiny eggs that the uh, younger chickens uh, you see one of them here. Are uh, starting to lay. Uh, the black one there, the black one over there. Those are the younger chickens, and the one beside it. Uh, it's a cross. So, no eggs inside. So we've got seven total. Trisha's taking a look at the feed. And it looks like they've got tons of water. And some grit. Along with some oyster shells. I filled this yesterday though. Yeah, well it's still it's up to here. No, it isn't. No? Oh, okay, great. And they've got uh, this is the last paddock that we're going to be putting them in um, on this side. Uh, they'll be here for another week yet though. Uh, so next week we'll look at moving them and moving them to over there by the shed. You can just see peeking through the, the, uh, the trees. So taking a look at our our single nectarine it seems to be progressing and the tree looks pretty good uh, a little bit of curl but not much at all um, peach trees doing fine it's growing quite nicely that one's a little bit behind and we've got uh, comfrey growing underneath so it's the little purple flowers in there and here as well. Now, of course, we've got Queen Anne's lace that's starting to make its presence known. And Rachel's been away for the weekend, but uh, she's been working on getting her flowers. So, some dahlias. So, uh, the um, hibiscus that was up on the deck and this one was as well this one's been blooming in fact there's a, another bloom there that's ready to go soon and another one there this one hasn't bloomed yet but there are blooms coming there's one right there uh, and then she's got her veg trog here uh, lettuce is going to go to head which is exactly what it's doing And so is the oregano. And I'm going to have to have a conversation with you about uh, why we let um, the weeds grow so high in the grass, etc. Essentially, it's uh, a mechanism of maintaining the soil without putting the investments of, of uh, time and energy 
and fossil fuels into maintaining them for the purposes of aesthetics. So what we've been doing instead is allowing the chickens to essentially be our uh, growers or to our lawnmowers. Um, so they, the chickens have been in here all the way along here and they have brought to a large extent the uh, the grass down. Um, there are issues with pollen, etc. So apparently our next door neighbor has issues with Queen Anne's lace uh, materials here that we're seeing. Um, but we don't have very much of it. Uh, so here's the insulation. We do have thistles. So we, we need to uh, maintain our thistles and bring the the, uh, I need to get those heads out of there. Um, Rachel has been working on the raspberry patch. I'll show you that. Mulching it and also getting the weeds down, clearing things out. So here's the raspberry patch. And they've been producing. As you can see, there are berries. We've been eating a few as we're going along. There are many more coming. So here's some more. And here are more. So we'll have a fairly good harvest this year. Um, hopefully a lot more next year. The plants are growing very nicely. We're going to have to make sure that we keep them in control because they have a tendency to take over. There's some more flowers over there. And then we need to clean these out. Oh, I see some berries. And I get to have these as Rachel's away. Another one. We can get a little bit into the weeds, literally. And we've got some more. Those guys. Thistles. And then we've got another row of raspberries here as well. So we'll have to finish cleaning these out. Mm. Those are good. Mm. I like raspberries a lot. Don't like the little seeds. And here we have Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to pick these black currants. Plant pretty full. And they are ready. So I will pick those later on today. Have to be careful. All of these plants. So this is oh I can't remember it the name of it but it attracts bees very, very uh, prolifically. So I have to be very careful. Here's the other plant, black currants. And, mm, these are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Right the right time. 
Okay. I will be back. The beans are starting to grow up. I was here uh, removing the um, additional fencing that we had put down. And moving the fencing over in this location so that we can do a little protection of our sweet potato slips. There. I'm going to have to do a better job. I've got two hands. So here are the sweet potato slips. You can see them starting to take off a little bit. They were having some issues with pressure from friendly neighborhood rabbits. They seem to have gotten past the stage where they were eating, eating. At least we hope. So I'll put the uh, chicken wire over top of it so that they get a little bit of protection. And there's a carrot. Okay, I'm not going to spend any more time here. So Trisha planted some more carrots. I think she did that over there. And she cleaned up the uh, row of flowers a bit. There's always more to do. I should get some mulch in here. We've got some straw that we can put over top. Cover over the soil. Okay. This is a full blown tour. I'll just show you. So, we did some mulching in here. Trisha did uh, the onions, which looked pretty good, uh, even though last week we did a little bit of um, taking the tops off of them. Seeing if there are any zucchinis that are ready. There's one that's not too bad looking. It's really tiny, so I'll leave that one. Another one down up here. That one's a pretty good size already. Put uh, eggshells down here to relieve some of the snail pressure. I don't know if you can see that one. The snail there. They just eat. Oh, that's the product of snails eating leaves. Should 
see there's quite a bit of damage. Big holes. Little holes. All kinds of holes. They of course leave some plants alone. The potatoes and the uh, tomatoes they do not touch. For most animals, tomatoes and potatoes are well. They they certainly don't taste good, and for humans uh, and chickens probably many other organisms. The vines themselves are quite uh, poisonous. The uh, plants are members of the nightshade family. So they do create the toxins that uh, you have to be aware of. So we can eat the, the uh, fruit, but you cannot eat the leaves. So, some little pitickles, as our kids used to call them when they were very, very small. When the kids were small, they would talk about pitickles, or tickles, rather than pickles. Pickles, of course, are just small cucumbers. These are the flowering heads of the onions that you do not want them to put their energy into because you prefer to get the onions to put their energy into the roots. So if they eventually get the message that going to flower is not going to be worthwhile for them, to see if there are any other flower heads that I can pull off. And then more squash back here. I don't even see any flowers at this point. It'll come. Hmm. Can't pull that out. And here are. Asparagus, sorry, not asparagus, uh, uh, nofloc, um, garlic. And they're almost done when the plants start dying off. You start pulling the garlic plants out. We'll use these for the time being. And then we have the plants mixed in with strawberries. Don't see any strawberries yet. Strawberry plants, that is. Oh, there's one. So there's a strawberry plant.
asparagus looks okay. I can't see much in the way of strawberry plants. There's another one here. Okay, general overview of what's happening in here. Um, I'm going to have to turn over the compost heaps in a bit. The last one on the end is relatively empty, so we've got some space. Um, that middle one should actually be doing quite well. Okay, this is where I'm going to start today. And I'll basically just go through the tomatoes one more time, tying them up. Uh, let's just take a look at the peppers a second. Plants are looking pretty healthy. So move down the row. Inevitable lamb's quarter. The grass is growing up in the middle. And then we have eggplants at the end. Right. No idea what this is. But it is not something that I want to grow here. And then two rows of tomatoes. Many of which already have fruit on them. And the fruits are getting much larger. Okay, I am going to get to work. I'll uh, let you follow along for the first couple, and then I will turn the camera off. Okay, this is what I've been able to accomplish. So they're all suckered and tied up. As you can see, they become much more manageable. You can get in between plants, take a look at what's going on, take a look at the actual growth, be able to ensure that there's one single stem moving forward. Oh, and the different heights are different uh, types of, of uh, tomato plants. So they'll have different kinds of growing rates and all that kind of stuff. All right, moving back out here. Uh, my next job, depending on how far I get. So Trish has been weeding the potato and the carrots in between them. Now I'll be working on getting this cleaned up. So getting these tarps off the ground, excess cricket compost, probably put it on the, uh, the pile with the triple mix, and then getting rid of the tarps themselves. Because this is where, in a week's time, will be putting the chickens. So in this general area, 84 square feet. Pardon? Be a good spot for the yeah, it's not grown up. 
How's it going over there? So this is ready to be cut down on this side. Okay. Clearly see where the pipes are. Okay, I'm going to put the camera down and uh, go to it for a little bit. Hi, it's Trisha from East Marsh Shakers. We are finishing up our garden work for today. It's getting quite hot out here now. So, <clears throat> so I ended up weeding around my flowers. I'm getting some zinnias um, along this row. So we're going to take the weed whacker <clears throat> um, next to it. Um, so I just wanted to make a break um, for the, the bed, actually, so the weed whacker doesn't, um, we don't inadvertently cut down flowers. So, and then I weeded the carrots. Yesterday, I planted, I sowed some more carrots, so we're going to keep that watered today, to, well, in the next week or so, to, so that they can germinate. But we figured that... Um, we seem to have a longer fall too, so they can stay in the ground a little bit longer. Till October, um, anyways. Yeah, so that, <clears throat> so they can probably still, we can still probably get a crop. So there is, there is some in there, but they're very kind of sparse. Um, Rollin took down the chicken wire that we had over the beam, so the little rabbits underneath this shed here. Um, would stop eating our beans so they seem to have now uh, it worked and they are going um, up their trellis now um, so hopefully that will continue but now we put that chicken wire over top of our sweet potatoes because they were also eating the tops of our sweet potatoes now we don't have enough chicken wire to do the whole bed but it's got it at least halfway or so so we'll see if that helps and uh, the potatoes are just doing wonderfully here. I don't know if Roland showed you that already. But the next thing we have to do is we have to um, hill, hill them up. So we're actually going to hill it up with um, straw and uh, so that the potatoes can continue to be covered and underground as they uh, start producing. Well, they are producing already, but there's a lot of flowers and stuff, and then they'll be dying off. So. Uh, yeah, we um, had a whole bunch of cricket manure here for the last couple of years on tarps and uh, so we did use that all in the garden, this bed especially, you can see the zinnias, it's all a lot brown, more brown uh, dirt there, but that's, chick that's the uh, cricket compost. And um, so we moved the tarps that they were on and uh, we're putting them over a section of thistles that we have in the field there. Um, where the thistles are is actually where we had a sort of a dining tent sun uh, shade last year. And so it was a bare area and they took over. So um, yeah, so we moved that. Um, we'll do some weed whacking and then this is the next place where our chickens are going to go. So they can they can start help us to get a path here and weed again because it is overgrown to get to our gardens and our hoop house and so on. But uh, we'll get that under control in the next couple weeks. But uh, anyways, till then, thanks for hanging out with us as we do our gardening and continue to uh, try to live sustainably as we can. And grow as much food as we can. So uh, take care. Bye for now.